Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. For today's video I wanted to outline how I made the flat floor on my FRS. Now this entire flat floor project is DIY. I bought some parts that I'll outline in the video uh, which parts I bought, but a lot of it was really just taking a piece of Alumalite, cutting it to shape, and fitting it onto the car. So I wanted to walk you guys through how I did this process so that if you guys wanted to make something similar, you could, and also tell you guys how I secured it to the car, what materials I used, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm first gonna show you guys the finished product and then I'm gonna go into how I made it. So first off, I'd like to apologize because the fact that I don't have a lift not only made this project difficult, but also made getting good shots of the flat floor difficult. But as you can see, the flat floor was made of three pieces of Alumalite all bolted to the car with the front piece overlapping the back two pieces. It all connects back into the diffuser, and I'll go into more detail about that later. It also is held on by these black washers, which I'll also go into detail about later. You can also see that there are cutouts for the suspension and for the jack stands and jack so I can lift up the car with the flat floor on. Now the first step to making the flat floor was to make a template. In order to do that, I went down to the local craft store and bought four different cardboard display boards. The first board was used to make the front section, I just cut that one to shape, while the last three were taped together and I also used a stick to help support them in order to make one of the rear templates. Now because the rear is going to be mirrors of each other, you only need to make one rear template and then you're just going to use that to make two different shapes of Alumalite. I also used the templates to locate where the holes were going to be because you can make errors on the template but you don't want to make errors on the final product. The next step is to break out the Alumalite. For this project, I used a 5 foot by 11 foot sheet of Alumalite, though because I did cut something wrong, I had to order another 4 foot by 8 foot sheet, though it's definitely possible to complete this project with the 5 foot by 11 foot sheet that you're looking at here. I first started by cutting the 5 foot by 11 foot sheet of Alumalite into smaller sections that were the size of the template. Then I laid the template over the smaller sections, drew out the specific shape of the template onto the uh, final Alumalite, and cut the template's shape into the Alumalite. Next, I wanted to go over the design of my flat floor. So in the front, you can see there's a cutout for the wheel to be able to turn freely and not interfere with the flat floor. Then you can see there's a cutout for a jack stand, cutout for the jack to lift up the car on the side, and then another cutout for a jack stand. Then there's these very weird shapes which allow for the suspension to move and not interfere with the flat floor, and then a cutout for the uh, differential. Here you can see how that cutout looks with the differential, which allows airflow through the differential cover to make sure the diff stays cool. In the future, I do plan on installing a NACA duct on the flat floor to channel air to the transmission to make sure the transmission stays cool as well. Now moving on to the design of the front piece of the flat floor. In the front, you can see this rectangular cutout, and that's specifically so the uh, flat floor seals with the front splitter because the back of my front splitter has a shape like that, so this will close that gap. Uh, the rest of the shape of the front piece will make more sense as I go over the mounting locations for it. But the goal of this is essentially to close off as much area as possible to allow for as much airflow under the car as possible. Next, I'm gonna go over the parts that I used to hold the Illumilite to the car. The first thing that I used was these Varus washers. You can buy them on their website. They're specifically designed to transfer the load on Illumilite. Here you can see one of the benefits of these washers, which is when you use a flathead M6 bolt, you can make it so that it's perfectly flat into the washer and helps to make your flat floor as flat as possible. Next, I used an assortment of flathead M6 bolts and flanged M8 bolts. Some of the mounting points will be OEM locations, while other points will use these M6 rib nuts in order to hold the flat floor to the body. Next, I used these plastic M6 and M8 spacers, which I got off of Amazon. I used them because in some locations, the flat floor was not touching the uh, rib nut or the OEM mounting point. So in order to make sure that I could tighten the bolt, I used these spacers to help close that gap between the flat floor and the mounting hole. Then lastly, I used some super glue to help hold the washers and hold the spacers together on the flat floor. Next I'm going to show you how I mounted the front plate of the Illumilite flat floor to the body. First I used these M8 mounting holes which held on the OEM skid plate. Next moving over I attached some rib nuts to this plastic sheet that goes near the wheel well. Moving back I now put another M8 bolt into this other OEM mounting location which I'm pointing to. And then the final location is this center point which I put another M6 rib nut on. Now moving over to the flat floor, you can see the holes where those M8 OEM skid plate mounting locations were. Moving over to the side, you can see the three holes for that plastic sheet which I installed rib nuts on. Moving into the back, you can see the second M8 location. And then in the back of the shot, you'll see three holes. One of them is an error, and then two of them are used to connect this sheet of Lumilite to the other two sheets of Lumilite. In the center, you can see the hole for the bolt that connects to that center rib nut, and the remainder of the holes mirror the mounting locations we just went over on the right side. Now moving over to one of the rear pieces of the flat floor. First location is going to be an OEM mounting location, which I'm pointing to right there. The next location is also going to be an OEM mounting location. 
moving on is another OEM mounting location. Now at this point you have to install a rib nut, so you have to drill it out and install a rib nut. Same with this one. Then moving over to the side, this is another location where you have to drill out the hole a little bit wider and install this M6 rib nut. Same with this location, same with this location, same with this location, and same with this location over here. This next mounting location connects to one of the straps that holds in the fuel tank. As you can see, my fuel tank is removed, but it doesn't need to be removed in order to install this. All you have to do is make a small bracket with a rib nut attached to it. And lastly, I mounted each of the two pieces of the rear flap floor to three locations on the diffuser using rib nuts. This way the airflow can travel perfectly through the car and then out of the rear diffuser, making the rear diffuser more efficient. Moving over to the flap floor, you can see on the top there is a rib nut installed on the flap floor to connect the front pieces to the back pieces. Then here you can see all of the locations which I pointed out previously in the video. Moving over to the back, you can see in the center there's a hole where that bracket that I showed you that I made connects to. And then you can see the three mounting locations to connect this to the diffuser. So that's going to do it for this video. I know this was just like a lot of information coming at you pretty quickly. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them. Um, if there's any other videos that you guys want to see or just any general questions that you guys have, you can also leave them in the comments below or follow me on Instagram at narrowman 98 Other than that, make sure you guys like the video, make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. So strong.